Today on Wired Up Retro, I'm going to be showing off my collection of game screens for consoles. This is my original Xbox, which I have running a uh, emulator for the Atari 5200. And this screen kind of makes it an, a portable 5200. If I was going on a camping trip, I'd bring the old screen along and plug it in and we'd be playing a little bit of Gremlins. You can see the screen does lower and it attaches to the back of the console and it's got some stereo speakers, volume control, and some brightness control as well. Pretty much everything you'd want for a portable LCD screen. All right, let's get playing some Atari 5200 Gremlins. We'll see how good I can do here. So quite a number of years ago, I had my Xbox modded so that I could put a variety of emulators on board, including this Atari XL box, which runs 5200 games. So I've really enjoyed this console. Um, there are some nuances to getting the emulators to actually perform. And uh, I will say this, it's uh, sometimes caused me to pull some hair out, but uh, I think in the end it was worth it. I really like this console. It's uh, pretty nice to be playing these old school games on. Oh, down I go. I guess if I was going on a camping trip, I might be able to um, enjoy a little bit of a portable Atari 5200. I'll have to remember that next time I go camping. All right, let's move on to our next console. Now what you're going to watch me uh, play is from Capcom Classics Collection on PlayStation 2. This is Three Wonders, and we're going to play Midnight Wanderers. There are three games here that you can choose from, so I'm going to pick one. All right, Three Wonders. Now this screen you're looking at is an Intech screen. All right, Midnight Wanderers, here we go. And I definitely want to show you this. This is a hip gear screen pad. Nice thing about this controller is that it has its own screen and you can play all sorts of games. This is from the Capcom Classics Collection on the PlayStation 2, Hyperdyne Sidearms. And in this game, uh, you basically have uh, the circle button shooting right and the square button shooting left. And when you're playing the game, you get certain power-ups and the guns will change. Uh, you'll have different uh, power-ups to shoot with more awesome weaponry. Definitely a lot of fun. I, I think this is a fun little title. And the hip gear screen pad is massive. And it definitely uh, has some nice features. This is not a cheap game controller. You probably might be able to find it for, I don't know, as little as $120 or as much as $280, depending on who's the seller. Anyway, kind of cool to have that. All right, and this is my 
I think approximately five inch audio vox 1990s tv and my atari 2600 which has alien on board go ahead and focus in on that screen there we go give this a shot Now you can hear that siren in the background. This is definitely sounding an awful lot like arcade Pac-Man and the game plays very similarly uh, as you can tell. Um, again, the footage is a little not great because of the, uh, the screen inherent factors of not being able to display um, quite as well as in real life. So I got some footage here. You can kind of see what's going on. Uh, maybe not see some of the pellets that I'm picking up and sometimes the character uh, the little guy running around kind of disappears for some reason because of the way the screen is artifacting but anyway you get the idea it's it's definitely a fun game nice sound effects definitely awesome oh all right let's move on to our next game system Move on over here to the PlayStation, and we're going to give uh, Robotron X a try. All right, what I have here is an Interax screen, which combines with the PS1 console, the second uh, version of the original PlayStation. Very small, compact little thing, and that screen, once again, just like the Xbox One, and the PlayStation 2 screen will move up and down. It's pretty nice. All right, let's give this a try. This is a two-stick shooter, and it's modeled after the original uh, after the original Robotron 2084. Same idea, really. Just some spruced-up graphics, maybe a few power-ups that weren't there originally. It's a whole lot of fun. Nice soundtrack, too. This was made back in the days when there was a big craze for going back and revamping classic games with techno music. Um, I think they wanted to copy what Jeff Minner did to um, Tempest with Tempest 2000 on the Jaguar and, and Tempest X on the PlayStation 1. People were really into that, that craze of having those classic games revamped. And I have to say, I'm still into it. <laughs> I wish they'd do it more nowadays. That'd be nice. Maybe even another Pong would be good. But yeah, they made games like, you know, Ball Blazer. That was a revamped graphics game for the uh, PlayStation. number of other ones all right well I'm gonna go ahead and just um, wrap this episode up by um, showing my final screen console and I think this might surprise some of you I don't usually um, go into um, current day systems but I'm kind of thinking that this might be a, a system that works really well for the things I'm interested in that is the Nintendo Switch. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. And here we have the Capcom title. Let me undo the joysticks out of here. Go ahead and click the kickstand here. There we go. Okay, here we go.
One of the downsides of a portable system. <laughs> Battery's low. I've played a whole lot of fun games on this Switch so far. Into the racing games for sure, but I'm also into the classics. Namco has a uh, game that's real nice. Let me go ahead and restart it here. That Namco game um, has on it Pac-Man, Galaga, Dig Dug, and a number of others. I really like it. A whole lot of fun. All right. So yeah, having a whole lot of fun with the uh, portable gaming systems that I own now. You know, sometimes I kind of forget that I even own these um, screens for these game consoles. And, you know, there's a number of applications that they can be helpful for you. Uh, one of which would be one day I was at a thrift store and I spotted a PlayStation 2 console. And I didn't know if it would work or not. And I went and asked the manager, hey, I got this hip gear screen pad at home. Could I bring this into the store and actually test that console? And so I was told, yeah, sure, just bring it in. And so I went home, grabbed it, brought it in, tested the console, and sure enough, uh, this was showing blank on the screen. So I knew this PlayStation 2 is shot. So I'm kind of extra glad I had the hip gear screen pad to test it with. And other applications, obviously, would be if you're going on a trip and you're going to be at a hotel or let's say a camping trip, you got, you got a way to plug it in. Uh, certainly, it's fun to play these consoles using these little screens. All right, so if you've uh, ever bought a screen or had a screen of some type or another, had a good experience, bad experience, definitely comment below about your screen experience. I look forward to hearing your comments. And uh, I'm going to be coming up with some new Wired Up Retro episodes, some of which have me going back to the past, uh, Atari 5200 perhaps, and also going into uh, the present day and the future with the Switch console using some controllers that no one's ever used on a Switch before. So I look forward to showing you how to do that and it's certainly going to be a whole lot of fun. Now our channel is uh, approaching 1,000 subscribers and if you have been holding back on subscribing to my channel that would be a good time. I look forward to seeing some new subscribers in the near future. Uh, the channel just keeps growing and I look forward to uh, you know getting to know you. If you uh, drop a comment below just uh, like to you know find out who you are and what you're into that's always fun. So uh, we'll look forward to producing more videos and sharing more about classic gaming. I hope you guys are having fun out there. I certainly am. This was a fun one to make. All right, we'll talk to you later. Take care.